a good chance that I can find some of the stick insects lurking around. Let's go. No way. No way. Look at this. That's incredible. I'm Jack Randall. Oh, bam. See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Oh, Up close and personal. And a massive snake. Okay, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated python in the water. Come on, let's go. Today I'm after a really cryptic animal. An animal that blends in so well to its surroundings you can hardly see them. They're all around you in the rainforest but it's so hard to see them because they look just like sticks. And for that reason, they're called stick insects. In this pocket of rainforest, there could be over 40 species of stick insects to find. With very few people surveying them, there's a real chance of even coming across a species not known to science. Looking for these dark areas for stick insects. Stick insects, they're extremely sensitive to light. So they actually start moving at night, but during the day, they'll be outside of the main sunshine. So places like this, where it's nice and shaded, it's a good chance that I can find some of the stick insects lurking around. Let's go. I've already come across a really close relative to the stick insects I'm looking for today. If you remember, it's the leaf insect called the jungle nymph. They're all classified in the same group, they're phasmids. To find the stick insects I'm looking for today, I'm choosing the same tactic as I did for the jungle nymph. Be really thorough. There's so many places, if you're a stick insect, to hide. Look at all these branches, they could be anywhere. I just need to keep looking and just keep an eye out for any bits of movement or something that's sticking out. Wait, oh, there's something in there already. Ah, I've got something. It's not a sick insect. It's almost as cool though. Wow, it's a rhinoceros beetle. These are absolute whoppers of the rainforest. They actually come out at night, they're flyers as well, but this one's just clinging to my finger and they've got really sharp claws at the end and he's just literally gripping onto my finger. Ah, oh, stop it. It's just going straight into my finger. They're so strong. Ah, ah, ah release. Whew. You wouldn't believe how strong these beetles are. They're incredible. These are one of the strongest insects in the world, the rhinoceros beetle. This is actually a female. The males are very characteristic for having a long horn, just like a rhino. That's why they're called a the rhinoceros beetle. And they do that in order to fight other males and in order to attract the females. Unlike most of the rainforest species out here, this guy does not rely on camouflage in order to survive. This one is about power and force and being big. They're also highly aggressive. Look at that. You just you see the arms coming up. They've got really good clingers. They're really strong. It really is like the Mike Tyson of the insect world. Look at him rearing up like that. That's an aggressive stance. All right, time to put this little character back onto the forest floor and keep looking for stick insects. Off you go. Rhino beetle, yes. can't get disheartened because they are around, but they're so well specialized with blending in, it makes it really tricky. Okay, look at this guy, stick insect. As I said, this place is perfect for them, and here's one right now. Look at it, it's not even moving. Look how well camouflaged they are. Antennae just pointing forwards, blending in perfectly 
into this branch. It's really amazing how these stick insects have evolved. It may well be that this species has evolved to blend in specifically to this tree, to that coloration of that bark. The place where I am right now has the highest diversity of stick insects. There are over 2,500 stick in insects in the world, but in this particular region, there's over 300. That's incredible. There must be one stick insect per, per species of tree in this region. Right, I'm just gonna try and get him down to show you exactly what he looks like. It's funny, stick insects, unlike a lot of the other animals, around here that might be venomous or have a way of attacking a potential predator. They don't have anything. Their only de line of defense for these stick insects is to blend in. Some of them actually make hissing sounds as well. But these ones are absolutely harmless. They really have to rely on that camouflage in order to survive. Look at you. It's really just the legs that actually stand out, to be honest. And in order to really try and blend in as much as possible, he even sticks his legs out. Look at that, the front leg is just sticking forward. That is crazy. That is kind of like the defense posture. Nope, I am definitely not an insect. I am a twig. Please don't eat me. That's what he's saying. Don't do it. So cool, thanks. I, might, I reckon I might be able to find some more. There really is a huge diversity. Lots of them around. You just have to keep your eyes peeled. Let's release this guy back into his, into his tree branch. They're just hanging there. It's like, nope, I'm not alive. I'm going to head off and see what else I can find. Well, okay, getting deep into the forest now. Let's keep going. The trick is to finding small things like stick insects is to really be thorough and search a small area really well. No way! No way! Look at this! Look at that, it's another species of stick insect. Just clinging on onto this mossy branch. This one, like, unlike the other one, which is just kind of brown and worked quite well into a piece of um, uh, uh, branch like that, this one, it just would do terribly on that. Would actually do amazingly on this. Okay, like every animal, I just kind of want to pick him up to see exactly what they look like up close and how they feel. Kind of reminds me of the leaf insect that I found. They're obviously related. They are related. They're in the phasmid family. So this one's kind of almost a merge between a stick and a leaf. It's a mossy, a mossy insect. It's funny, I'm actually looking at this one closely and it looks very similar to a jungle nymph. It may be a male. There may be difference between a male and a female because this doesn't look obviously like a jungle nymph, they're massive, but it's got all the characteristics of one in terms of its abdomen, very similar, it's got spikiness, but it might not be. It might be just be a, a species that's closely related, it may have diverged from the jungle nymph and then has ended up on this mossy area. That's how speciation happens. They end up getting isolated onto different parts and they end up evolving into different species themselves. So if with all these different places where they can hide and get isolated, you can see how these species have evolved over time. Well, there you go, the second species of sick insect, very different looking. It just shows, if you look really carefully in a very small area, you never know what you might be able to find. You just gotta keep your eyes peeled and look in particular areas. I'm gonna let this sick insect go back onto his mus mossy branch. Off you go. Stick insect, yes. When you're in the rainforest, you might think there's nothing living there. You could walk for days and not notice anything. That doesn't mean the animals aren't there. They are there. Just look closely. 
What I have learned is that most animals in the jungle have evolved to avoid detection. If you are a predator, you can't be noticed by prey. If you are prey, you can't be noticed by predator. But with every rule, there's always an exception. <laughs>